joining us. I'm so pleased to have at the table Rachel Shapps. Oh, thank you thank so you much for, for being me. here. I'm so excited. You're embarking on a singing career. Um, singing is in your family. Eartha Kitt yes. is your grandmother. Yes. Um, do you sound like her at all when you listen to her recordings? Any any tonal stuff at all? If anything, it's just because we both have a little bit of a lower register as a female, but that's really it. Now she passed some years ago, mm -hmm. and you were little, and we're gonna look some, at some pictures um, down memory lane. Did you ever sing with her when you were little, tiny? There were a couple times that I remember singing for her. I don't remember if we ever sang together. There was I remember there was a time where she asked me to teach her how to do harmonies because she doesn't she didn't really know how to do them. And I tried so hard. I remember we spent an afternoon in her old house and I remember sitting on her couch and trying to explain it to her, but I didn't know what I was doing. It just happened and she had no idea what we were doing. So that was the only time we may have sang together, but and other she had, than that. She had a style like no other. It was so distinct. I mean like no one else. Every time I hear it, any coffee shop I'm in, I'm, oh, it's like instant. And how neat is that to hear your grandmother play? Yeah. Um, what do you think she'd think of you embarking on this career? Oh, she'd be like, finally, thank God. <laughs> like, about Somebody time. in the family, yeah. Right? right? Yeah, but she's known that I, she always knew that I wanted to do this and that it was something that I loved, so I think that she would be really happy to know that I actually am, am going for it and not just letting it kind of fall by the wayside as a hobby. So, What does it mean going for it? How long has this been in your mind? You're 23 years old right now, so how long have you been thinking, I want to do this? Uh, I would say that I really went for it seriously about, well, I graduated college in May of 2017 and I moved to Chicago and was working like a, a nine to five job and then I was there about seven months, so I would say 28, the beginning of 2018 is when I quit my job and was like, I am going to pursue music full time. That's my job. Voice now. lessons, the whole bit, or no voice not lessons. Trained. Okay. On, I'm not formally trained. Just started writing every day and working with, uh, collaborating with a bunch of other musicians, producers, reaching out to people in the industry and trying to just make as many connections with people as possible and work with people who can help me break into the industry and so for the last year and a half I've just been doing it and it's a slow progression but it's happening and so now the last couple of months have really felt like a pickup. And, and we're going to hear you in a little bit. If you had to, to describe your voice what would you say? It's um... And your songs. I mean what, what yeah, kind of genre are you it's in? It's all a mesh. I would say that I write my my music is pop music, but I write a little bit more like a folk singer or a folk writer in that it's very much a storytelling. The songs are all like as though they're written in full sentences. Like you could read it as as a story too. Um, and my voice is a lot deeper than than most female singers, so it's a little more of like a soul infused pop sound so I always say that it's a it's a blend of soul pop and folk is who, somewhere in there who are your influences besides your grandmother <laughs> right of course um, <laughs> well, I love jazz sure. right she yeah. is jazz and it, and I would say that I grew up listening to such a variety of music that my tastes are so all over the map but in terms of recent people that have been really influential to me, I would say Adele is a huge one for me, Alicia Keys is a huge one for me, um, and then, I mean, even leading into the pop genre, like, I, I'm obsessed with Ed Sheeran, and as a writer and as a vocalist, same with John Mayer. And he's so laid back. So cool. He just he's seems just like so a cool, cool guy. Right? Yeah. I would just like to hang out with him, too. Well, you, you, uh, you, know, you may maybe. well, if, if you get there, right? Right. Um, let's go through some pictures okay. and talk about Eartha Kitt, your, your grandmother, um, and describe as best you can how old you were and where was this and how do you describe her? God. If somebody had never met Eartha Kitt, how would you describe her? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's a loaded question. I, um, I mean, I must have been, what, like six years old in this picture? Six, seven? I, I don't even remember where this was taken, but uh, if I had to describe she was, I mean, it was so different because she was my grandma, but she was definitely What'd a character. What did you call her? Did you call her grandma? I called her Nana. Nana, mm -hmm. okay. Um, 
she was very she was very calculated in everything that she did. She didn't speak unless she had something to say explicitly, and she was very smart, you could tell, very creative. Um, and she almost had these different personas when she was in the limelight of being, you know, like theatrical and, and dramatic when, they're, when you know, the cameras are turned on and when she's on stage. And then with us, she was always just, I don't know. She thought we, she thought I was hysterical, so she was always just like giggling at everything I did. And I would and love to hear her laugh. Oh, I love this haunting. <laughs> I love this picture. Where was this? This was at. It must have been in her house in Pond Ridge, uh, New York, when I was super little. She had this beautiful garden. I mean, she was all about like the earth. I mean, obviously, Eartha. Eartha. Yeah. Right. yeah. From the so, earth. So there, she had so, she loved gardening and she had this big garden. She was right on the pond. And I remember there were always like snapping turtles in her backyard and I was terrified of them, but we would go and sit out there. That's such a great picture. Yeah. Just from it's great. the back. All right, this it looks like she, was she funny? She was such a character. I, her humor was, she was so smart that her humor was more of a wit than it ever was like she was never a joke like a jokester but she loved making cracks at people and and she, it's probably where i get some of my sarcasm from i'm sure but she was a she was a character that's for sure this picture was it a wedding a christening that, it was um was that was my mom's wedding my mom's wedding to my stepdad i believe okay so i was what six years old and there's a brother and somebody else in the back. My stepbrother, and I believe that's my stepdad in the back. Okay. And this one, she's singing, and you're really little. Oh, yeah. I'm a little girl at the Carlisle. And she would sing in the, what's that room called? The, the back Your room. mom's off stage. She yeah. was Eartha's daughter. Yeah. Uh, talk, so this, how cool is this? You're sitting at the Carlisle, and yeah. she's singing. Yeah, I was singing. practically born there. I mean, I was running around there, like, as a little baby. Of through that through the, up the hotel and we actually went to a viewing of the Carlisle's documentary that they put out a couple years maybe last year or, or two years ago and the staff at the hotel told me that they remembered me as a little girl running around <laughs> being that little cute. destructive girl all right here's another picture oh yeah just having fun with just, Grammy yeah, with Nana of course I don't even know what we were doing here is a, I'm not sure what this next one is. So actually, People Magazine did uh, probably like five years ago, five or six years ago now, they did a feature about um, granddaughters and uh, like beautiful, it was in their beautiful uh, edition of the uh -huh. magazine. I think Jennifer Aniston's on the cover. And of course she is. Of course. And here you are. <laughs> and then there's me in the same way. I mean, <laughs> I'm honored. So they, uh, they had a bunch, I mean, I'm pretty sure like Audrey Hepburn or Katherine Hepburn's granddaughters and so someone is next to me and it was like such an honor that we were even on the same page but it was just this page spread about famous people and their granddaughters. I love it. All right, here's your your brother. Mhm. Mm and you? Yeah, I had some fancy lipstick on in this one. I must have borrowed my grandma's. I looked at the picture and I I know for a fact I was definitely tooling around in her makeup bag. And Did you ever do each other's makeup? I would always sit and watch her makeup artist, Carlo, do her makeup and I just was like mesmerized by it. It's why I got into me makeup and beauty when I was so young. I would just love all of the, the glam. But, and I would watch him, and he was so meticulous. For me, it was the Avon lady coming to my house. Oh, perfect. <laughs> uh, you know, stuff. everyone has their own. <laughs> right. um, here's three generations. Yeah. So Your this mom. was in People Magazine when I was really young. Uh -huh. People Magazine must love us. But they, yeah, yeah they did a, this story, and then this was the cover of that story. And then one more of your mom and you and Ursa. This was in Rosie Magazine, right? Oh, people. And this is just your life. You're in magazines. Well, what do you know? You're just, you know, I was it's just, just little. It's I just, just the way it is, I right? just remember specifically in that picture, the tie-dye shirt I was wearing, I, I originally had a different color on and they made me change and I was like bummed. Because it didn't match the color yeah. or something like yeah. that. Yeah, that was all I remember from it. Growing up as her granddaughter, you've had um, insight to a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, as you go forward and you're a singer, who do you want to emulate? How do you want to be? How do you want people to know you? I mean, you're not Taylor Swift. Right. You're not, who do you think you're going to be? I, 
I mean, as you emerge, just you, right. Rachel. I think that I would definitely love to make some sort of legacy similar to the way that my grandma did, where she was just so much about using her platform to not even stand up for because she didn't feel like she had to necessarily speak at people about things. She just hoped that the way that she felt and acted would inspire other people to do the same. And I would love to do that where I just don't preach at people and just set an example for equality and acceptance and and just build a legacy around that because that to me is is so important and it's something she instilled in me from a very young age. I mean, I never I mean, even the, the color of our skin is different. I had no idea. And, she, you know, she had a big following of people in the LGBT community. And that was before it was so talked about in society. And I just, I never even knew that we were, quote, unquote, different from each other. I didn't know that people were, I mean, it's just, we're all human. So that would be my biggest thing to, to carry on as a legacy of, you know, aside from the music and just make people feel seen and accepted and like they're not alone. Well, we need to have your generation help this world in yeah. that in that manner mm -hmm. for sure. Now you're going to move out to Los Angeles. Yeah. And w how do you think you're going to build this career? I mean, because it's it's there's no straight lines, right? No, there's not. It's all over the place. It's you all over the place. And the fact that you write music is so much in your corner because mm -hmm. if you don't write, you know, you can't feel things in the same way, right? right. So you might be writing motion picture scores. You might, I mean, who knows what's right. going to happen? And I would love to get into writing for, for other people as well, you know, with and other people. So, I mean, for me, it's I love writing as much as I love performing, maybe arguably more. And I would love to start, when I get out to L.A., start writing and pitching those songs for other artists or be part of the the writers in a song that end up being someone else's song or, or a different genre and then also focus on my own artistry outside of that. So I think that the way to get when I get there is really to just start collaborating with anybody and everybody, working on stuff, getting outside my comfort zone and then learning so much from these people I'm sure and growing and evolving as an artist so that when I come back to my own music it really feels like I've gotten there, like it's polished and I've worked to get there. Are you sure you're only 23? I Yeah, I get that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but that's terrific because you're kind of an old soul. So yeah. you can write from that as well. Yeah. What instruments do you play? Piano? So piano and guitar, but I'm self-taught in both. So I can't read any music. It's just how, by how ear. Are you, I took piano for seven years. How are you self-taught? It's When I say self-taught, it's like I can figure out what I'm playing, but there by no means am I the one performing on stage unless I've had a couple weeks, maybe months to practice. When you write music, do you, do you hear a melody in your head or do, do you fool around with the guitar and the piano to, to Either, hear something? Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's both. It's, it's all of the above. It's sometimes I have a concept in my head that I really want to write about. So I'll start just writing, like ranting, and I'll start just pulling lines out of that that I think I could make into lyrics. Sometimes I'm just tooling around on the piano or on guitar and I'll start playing around with some chords and just start humming random melodies over those chords and see what works and then words just kind of start flowing. It really depends. Each song is written so differently and they all start so different, but it's, I would say the majority of the time now I try and start with a concept and then build off of the concept and so it feels more like it was born from a from an original idea and then unfolded into something. What'd you major in college? You went out to Michigan to go to school. Uh, like first psychology and then advertising, so. Well, advertising will come in handy. Totally, I actually, <laughs> I will say, I even still have like my Google Analytics, I my account that I used in one of my marketing classes and advertising, and I have used it more now for my own website and things in advertising than I ever did in college. So I learned something that I actually am applying to my life which is job, rare. which is not <laughs> how, what I would have expected. <clears throat> the song that you're going to do, um, what's it about? Um, how did you write it? So the song is called Learn My Lesson, and there are so many things that it could be about. The basic idea of the story is that 
I'm young and I'm a hopeless romantic and I, the way that I am in relationships is that I give like a thousand percent to these relationships before they're even relationships. Like nothing has even happened yet and I'm like That's because you're heels. female. That's what and we do. It's like, it's yeah. impossible not to. So I would end up constantly disappointed by just these passing flings not f unfolding into the greatest romance of our generation every time that I started to realize that maybe I was going after the wrong things and maybe the things that I was drawing into were probably some red flags as traits that I was finding in these young gentlemen. So instead of writing a song from the point of view of it's all your fault for breaking my heart kind of thing, I wanted to take the responsibility of saying like it's not on them for not falling in love with me and being the greatest love story of our generation. It's on me for continuing to think that this guy is going to be the one who's going to be the greatest love story. So the song is basically like, when am I going to learn my lesson to stop chasing these traits and these characteristics about people that clearly are I'm not happy with in the end or are not working out with in the end. So. That's incredibly mature. Uh, thank you. I <laughs> felt like it was my turn to take yeah. some responsibility. So uh, you shot a music video. Um, they're hard to do. They're hard to do. How long did it take you to do it? We had like a full eight or nine hours. So we actually did it pretty quickly considering um, we had this loft in downtown Los Angeles and the loft itself is broken up into a bunch of different scenes and then there's a rooftop on the loft. So luckily we were all in one location the whole day and it, it was exhausting. I cannot explain how many times I had to like powder my face and put deodorant on and <laughs> stand in front of the fan and turn on the air conditioning. But it was, it was awesome. The crew was amazing. It's really in incredible what, what some professional equipment and people who know what they're doing with it will do. As opposed to trying to shoot it yourself. Right, because you just, even when it was uncut and there was no color, like no coloring they behind it. They knew the storyline yeah. was going to go. They right. knew everything. They were, they were directing it so well. And then I would watch, you know, playback just on the monitors and it looked beautiful already. And they haven't even, they hadn't even edited anything. So they were amazing. It was, it was great. And then I just kind of was like, I trust it. Do what, do your thing. Well, it's gorgeous. And we're going to see that too. All right. Enough talk already. We should hear you sing. You're right. a delight. And I wish you all the luck in Thank the world. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Six a.m. Haven't slept and my mind keeps running out of gas. I can't help myself. Keep on questioning why. Why I let myself get my hopes up and I let my heart pull you in closer. And I got too lost to see any more signs. Oh, I should have known from the look on his face. It's not the first time somebody's looked at me that way. Always hopeful this time won't be the same. It's got me questioning, it's got me questioning When will I learn my lesson? When will it really stick? I'm so sick and tired of falling for all these tricks And I swear that I'm smarter than letting you in my head Fool me one shame on you, but shame on me to forget I just woke up with no missed calls since we broke up and I asked my heart, how long's this gonna take? So you get your stuff back together, every heartbreak's making me get better at it. I'm not sure how much longer I can wait. Oh, I should have known from the look on his face. It's not the first time somebody's looked at me that way. Always hopeful this time won't be the same. It's got me questioning, it's got me questioning When will I learn my lesson? When will it really stick? I'm so sick and tired of falling for all these tricks And I swear that I'm smarter than letting you in my head Fool me one
and shame on you, but shame on me to forget. Drink or two, I'm starting to learn a thing or two, thing or two. Give me space, that's real big of you. You know I deserve somebody who, somebody who. I'm gonna learn my lesson, I'm gonna live realistic. I'm so sick and tired of falling for all these tricks. And I swear that I'm smarter than letting you in my head for me. Shame on you, but shame on me to forget.
girl, I spent all night kissing And if one was right here, then who else is missing? Got a little sidetracked to find my solution And find the keys to the door, but it's also a metaphor Keeps keep keep locked in the grocery store of my mind Just the same time, I skip right ahead to the last ride